Hi, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf, and I have no idea what just happened. There was like a blurp. <laughs> Welcome to the Sewing and Crafting Party. I am a Brother Brand Ambassador, and today we have the fabulous Brother Brand Ambassador as well, Cindy Hogan, and she has a very cool patriotic project for you to do. So if you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. I'm just going to let you all roll in. We are live on the Brother Sews and Brother Crafting Facebook and YouTube channels. And you can comment, say hi, say where you're from. You never know, your neighbor might be sewing next to you or fishing if it's this time of year. And also, we can see your comments and questions throughout the whole thing. And I'll make sure that we bring those up at the end. So let's not make Cindy wait any longer, but real quick, just so you know, the live show schedule is posted on the Brother Facebook page, and I'll refresh your memory at the end of the show. So I see Arnell rolling in. Cindy Hogan, how are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Oh, it's so great to see you. You too. You too. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Arnell. Everybody. Everybody. And here's Caroline. We've got North Carolina rolling in. <laughs> hey, Beverly. Uh, everybody is. So, uh, by the way, I just lost something, sorry. There's like, a, there's like a weird blurb on Facebook. So sorry everyone if there was like something weird there. How are you? And I know that your project is absolutely perfect for this time of the year because July 4th is coming up. What are you gonna show us today? We're gonna play in my design center. We're gonna do it on the 10 needle, but you can do it on any machine that has my design center on it. Just remember the orientation on the 10 needle is landscape, whereas everybody else's is going to be portrait view. So if you have the Stellaire or the Dream or the Luminaire, any of the machines that have my design center on it can do this project. That's awesome. So even can some people with the older, well, not older, but older models, when it, it first came out, can they do most of it on there? Um, they'd have I don't to know trace it. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> they'd have to trace it. So um, the like the Quattros with the, the pen and pad, they'd have to trace it. They don't have the option of scanning the artwork or bringing it in on the JPEG. So that's the other thing that I was going to talk about. Usually I don't print out artwork. I save it to a USB stick and bring it in that way. I'm going to do it both ways for you today. So you can see the difference. Um, the, either one will work, but I find it more convenient to use a USB media than it, than to actually print something out, go to the printer, bring it back, make sure I've got it straight and ready to go. If I do it on a USB stick, any of the any of the machines can do it the same way. If um, you're printing out and you're using the still air, you'll need to place the easiest way to get it the right size is to place your frame over your piece of paper mm -hmm. and take the picture with the My Design Snap app that way. That way, it resizes it to know it's in that hoop. Um, so that would be one of the, that's a little tip I would tell you on the still air is that when you take your picture, put it, put the hoop over the top. You don't have to hoop the picture, just lay, lay your hoop over the top of that picture so that it will grab it in the right orientation and give it the right size. That's a really good tip. Actually, I never even thought about doing that. In fact, last week, if you guys missed that episode, there was a whole episode on how to use that app. So if you have any questions, go back there too. This is going to be fun. So we can so, yeah. give a little sneak peek of what you're working on. Oh, I moved it over to the other table, but I'll, I'll show you a sneak peek when I flip cameras and we'll flip to that camera first. Awesome. <laughs> it's very cute, by the way. Very cute. Oh, I got you up on. <laughs> oh, that's really cute, Cindy. So that's what we're going to, I've got, you've got the back side of the one that I've, I'm going to show you how to turn, but this is the project. So um, some things that I learned on this one, I left my opening on the side in the future. I did it um, on the bottom. So you'll see that when I do it, but this is all done in the hoop. So we're going to use the 10 needle to create it in my design center. Okay. So, the first thing that you have to do is put your scan board on. To do that, you want to make sure, oops, dropped it in the floor. <laughs> Just a minor little technicality there. There's this little gidget that goes over your throat plate. There's two little holes and you put it in there. It sets on here. There's another one that comes with your machine if you lose that one, but you want to actually put that over it. And then we're going to screw our 
scan board into place. I've printed out my picture. You do not have to use all six magnets that come with it. I've got two down and that will work just fine for the picture that I have. So let's start in my design center. It's going to tell you that the carriage is going to move. And yes, I could have put a second screw in, but I found out that it worked with only one. So I'm not going to worry with doing that. So we're going to come up here. Can you all see well now? Let me get my chest out of the way. There's enough stuff in this room to kill a cow. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Cindy. No killing cows on the show, okay? <laughs> I just tripped over a table. <laughs> all right. All right. So I printed it out, and I personally like doing line images instead of um, what I would say colored images because I think you get a better result. All right. So I'm going to touch line design and we're going to touch scan. If I pulled from the USB stick, when I do that, I'll pull from USB right here, but we're just going to touch scan and we're going to touch OK because it's telling us the frame is going to be scanned with a built in camera. That's exactly what I want it to do. So we'll touch OK and it's going to take its time, sweet time and scan my image. Any questions so far? No, everybody's just watching. Okay. So I did take the uh, my arm off to be able to put the scan board on. So you can't have your scan board arm on and your arm at the same time. <clears throat> Sharon wants to know, is it possible to get that artwork? Is it possible to get that artwork? It may be possible. Okay, maybe, Sharon, maybe. <laughs> it may not happen today. How's that for an answer? <laughs> I can post it on my website, but it won't happen today. So Sharon, keep an eye out and I will um, make a little mention in my live show tomorrow or Thursday when it's up and ready for you. Good idea, good idea. So now we're gonna crop this in to get out anything that we don't want it to look at. And so if you had multiple things printed on this page, that's fine. You just crop into what you want to use. And then we'll touch OK. I want a zigzag outline, but if you know you want a different outline, you can come in here and pick a different outline. We can tell it we want a different outline color here as well. So let's say we want to go with blue instead of black. Touch OK and then touch OK and it will set this down on your page when you touch set. And it should have a blue outline on it. Now, I want to turn my image off in the background so we can see what our result looks like. Let's zoom in. So you see how I've got my nice clean artwork there? Oh yeah. That's what you're looking for. I'm going to do the same thing with USB. It just saves time. So if we go my design center, I guess I could have just touched line image here, touch line image, touch the USB. And here's my USB JPEG. It's already cropped to it because I made it that perfect size. Once again, I can choose a different outline color if I want. Why don't we go with red this time just to, so you can see the difference and let's touch. Okay. And then touch set. There you go. So you'll see there it is in red. And once again, I've got nice clean artwork. So that you can do it either method, just letting you know that that's the way it works. All right. Looks great. Now I want to come in here and I want to fill it with color. So you have properties for both items and this one is your region. This one's your outline. So if you want to change something about either one, you can do that. I'm going to touch the line properties and I'm going to change my color to blue. And I'm going to touch the outside with the paint bucket. This is your, this is your flood fill tool. It's called a flood fill tool. We call it the paint bucket, but it is the flood fill tool. The reason I did that as opposed to the pencil is now I can just touch the outline around the outside and the entire outline changes color. 
if I were on the pencil, just what I was drawing would change color. Um, same thing here, but I'm good because it's got red as my choice and that's what I want for this outside edge. So flood fill tool, and we're just gonna tap right there to grab it. You'll notice I have a hole in the center of my A, so I need to fill that as well. Since they were not connected, they're two separate areas. Now, I want this to be white. So I'm going to go to my fill properties and choose the color. Let's do, let's do a different color besides white because you will not be able to see it. I'm going to go with kind of this taupey color. We'll remember I'm going to sew it white. We're just going to give it a different color. Blood fill tool is still selected. And so now let's just touch the areas to fill them. How simple is that? Super simple. So now I want this in a five by seven hoop. So I want to see that five by seven hoop. So I know where the parameters of my design can go. Cause we're going to make an in the hoop project here. If you are not familiar with metric, you can actually change things up but I want to select my, a different hoop style. So let's see here. You would think I would have memorized what page I wanted to go to. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm laughing. Oh, actually, well, okay guys, the scan board is on, so it's not going to give me hoop options. Notice right here, it shows me scan boards on. Mm -hmm. So let me put my embroidery arm on. I'm laughing about when you said you can't remember which page. I'm terrible at that. I'll think, oh, I know, I know. And then I don't. Or it changes yeah. to the next machine. <laughs> and I never can remember which one it goes on. So while she's changing that, I saw somebody just ask, how can I watch this again? Well, well let's see. Are you watching on Facebook? Or well, one sec. And I can fill you in. <laughs> you notice that screen changed? Oh, it did change. So now it tells me my A arm is on and it tells me I've got my five, I've set, got it set to a five by seven, which is exactly what I want it to be. And we can see that I'll bring you up large here. <clears throat> and I'll just, while you're tying that on, hey, Melina, since you're on Facebook to watch <laughs> this over, you can watch all of these over. Just share this to your Facebook page, to your own Facebook page, and you can watch it as many times as you want. Uh, the replay starts immediately after we're live. Hope that helps. All right, go ahead, Cindy. So I changed my grid up a little bit just so that you would be able to see it better. At 10 millimeters, it's tiny, um, and it kind of interferes with you seeing the hoop parameters, but you can see the hoop parameters there. So let's touch OK. So there is my hoop parameters. Oops, undo right around that outside edge. <clears throat> All right. So I want to make this smaller. We're going to go into our selection tool and we are going to select it all. Depending on what machine you have will depend on what selection tools you have. If you don't have that, you will probably have this and you can just draw right around it and it'll grab the whole thing. Either one works, but that, that one, the last one is the whole kit and caboodle. So let's resize this down just a little bit. Touch your size button and then just kind of shrink that guy in. And then I'm going to move him over to my side. About to that little line right there. So I'm good to go on him. Now I want to, since we're doing an in the hoop project, I want to draw a line from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to go back into my properties tool on the line. So, and touch this guy right here, touch. Okay. Actually let's change this color so that it's something else. And then touch at the top, drag it down and oops, undo. And then let's just select it. So now it's ready. This was one of those things that was kind of a fun thing to learn about. It, that's actually about where I want it to be. It seems to be even on both sides. I'm good with that. So I went in to my fill tool selection area and grabbed my decorative fill button 
choose select and pick a different decorative fill. I kind of liked this one. Whoops, where'd it go? Number 16. Kind of like thought it looked like stars. Touch OK. Pick a color. Touch OK again. Now, here's the trick. Let's see if it'll work for me today. I'm going to grab my shapes tool and grab the hoop. Choose the hoop that I want it to fill. Flood fill tool. Touch the paint bucket. Notice how it didn't do the whole hoop because I made that line in there first. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. Now, is that not slick? That's very slick. That looks so good, too. If I, let me undo that. If I had done flood fill and just did the whole thing, it would have gone, oops, I've still got it selected for the hoop. So let's go back in here. This is what it would default to. Oh, flood fill. It's not going to let me get back past that boundary right now, but usually it would fill the whole page if I didn't tell it that I was in that five by seven hoop first. Okay. So that was something that I learned and it didn't fill the entire hoop. It only filled the side that I was in on. If you want it on this side, you have to touch that side to add it to it. I did not want it on that side. So we're going to touch next. And I see that I did forgot to do something. I don't want that line right there to be a zigzag line. So let's go check and change that. I just taught you touch the arrows here. If you forget something, you can always nab it. That shows me that I've got pink and evidently I've got a few pinks. Oh no, there those are, those are my reds. There we go. There's my pink line. I'm going to come touch it and change it to a running stitch. That looks good, right? So what else did I do? I found the properties for my fill stitches. And this is something I learned as a result of playing with this while I was stitching it out. I wanted under sewing on. And so in order to do it for all of the fill stitches, if I touch this little button right here, it will link them together and I can turn under sewing on for all of them. Since I was going on a batting, I also increased what we call pull compensation. That's the give and take of the stretch of the stitch. You Basically, I increased that by to about 0 .5, 0 0.5 millimeters. I always do this in metric. I may size things in inches, but I always do that in metric. All right. I did change my angles because I wanted them all to be consistent. So let's unlink these. And we're on the red. I'm going to touch auto, change it to manual. And I had left that at 45 degrees. Touch the next area, which is another red. Manual, 45 degrees. I can't do everything at the same time because I want my blue, my white to be a different direction. So here's my white. Change it from auto to manual. And this one, I did the opposite direction. So I went to 135. You just change it from auto to manual and then you have control over the angles. Otherwise, the machine chooses whatever it wants to do and everything may be different directions. This makes it consistent. All right. So this part of our design is finished. If I want to come back to it, I want to save it to my machine's memory and I do want to come back to it. So I'm going to touch memory and save it to the machine. You could also save it to your USB stick if you wanted to. We're going to now set this design. And it's telling me that it's going to take me out of my design center. If I haven't saved it and I want to, I'd better press cancel and save. We already saved it. So we're going to go ahead and touch OK. It's no longer in a outline format to where we can change any of those properties. OK. So this is the first part of our design. We want to add to it. In order to make this an in the hoop project, we need to add the other parts to the design. So we're going to touch add my design center. 
touch OK. And I'm going to pull that design that I just put in there out of the memory pocket. There it is. We're going to touch OK. Everybody see that design? Now, the reason I did this is because I want that line and I wanted to make sure it was in the exact same spot. So I'm going to touch my magic wand and touch my blue area and get rid of it. Once again, I'm going to actually this time I'm going to draw around my USA and cut that. So now all I have is my little line here. Everybody see that? Or we that can see it. Yep. Okay. So we're going to magic wand to select it. Why are you not letting me? Oh, there we go. Thank you. Why are you not letting me have you? All right, there it is. Copy. And then we're going to choose size and center. Now we can just move it over and I want to get it almost to the edge of my hoop. As close to that as I can. Okay, so that's good. I've got two lines. Now I want to change the color of that line so it sews in a different color for me. So let's go to our region properties, change it to a running stitch, and let's change it to a different color so that it creates a color stop. Blood tool, touch it. Oh, evidently I've got an outline around there. So hold on. Let's see here. Let's do our magic selection wand and touch this right here. All right, now this flood fill tool. Okay, so now we need to have our outline to go around the whole kit and caboodle to sew it together. So we're gonna touch our stamps shape tool, choose the square. I chose the square because I had better luck with it. And you wanna go into size. We wanna shrink it down to where it's inside the area I think I did about 123 millimeters and then make it go wide. I want it inside that green line that I had. Once I've got it done, touch OK, touch next. Everything looks like it's a running stitch. We should be good. Oh, what did I forget to do guys? Right now it's gonna sew it totally closed. We need to leave an opening. So let's grab our eraser tool. And I don't care what size, we're just gonna open up the bottom. <laughs> it's either uh, you find that eraser tool or you're gonna be grabbing your seam ripper. We know how that works. <laughs> yes, indeed. So we're gonna to touch next. And you can save this to the memory as well, just in case you wanna come back and use it later. Set it because now we're leaving my design center. Touch OK and your design is ready to go. Now, I've got one stitched up to the line. So we're gonna actually, I think the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory, but I do have one stitched up into the, to the line. So, I'm, so that I'm doing the exact pattern that I started with, let's pull mine out of the machine's memory. That one right there, I'm assuming. <laughs> Let's pray I picked the right one. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna end edit and I'm gonna show you some tricks that I did on this side. This button right here allows you to put color stops on. So what I did was when I got to my lines, when it came to the, the line parts, I put hands. So you touch it and you touch the hand. You could also turn off a color if you want to. So since I know I don't need to sew these other colors at this point, we can touch the no sew button and turn them off. 
up until I get to where I need it to stitch. So there we go. Now all I have left are my lines to sew and I've actually sewn the very first one. So are we ready to look and see what we're about to do? Oh, sure. All right. So if you look at my project, let me pull it out of here. Any questions? Am I going too fast? No, everybody says you explain so well. They're very happy with that. All right. So here is my line. And normally I would take a pen and mark a quarter of an inch over just so that I would know where I'm going. And how do I know how big to make my fabric is the next one. Did I take that spacer off? I did. Yeah. So what I actually did was I stitched the next line as well and backed up. So if we go into embroidery, these two are there. I'm going to change their colors because I don't actually need them to sew pumpkin and leaf green. We're going to touch our magic wand today and make those both sew blue, which is on my needle too. All right. So that I would know how, to, how big I needed to make my fabric, I stitched this line over here that's all the way over to the right hand side. And then I measured the distance and just backed up. It's so quiet. You, you do this one time and you'll know how, how long it needs to be. So you then measure, oh, I forgot to change screen. So then you measure this part right here and cut your fabric to meet that. Oh, and my watch is telling me your machine is paused. I don't know if y'all can see that, but my stitch monitor's up there and my machine has paused. That's very cool. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to lay our fabric down. We're going to back up color. So we're going to plus minus and back up to where it's going to sew. Oh, I turned off too many colors. Hold on. Let's return and let's turn back on this color. Now I can do it. Let's magic wand them again. The difference between magic wanding and color changing is the diff this holds its settings and magic wand does not. So if you know you're going to change some, the color of something multiple times, you probably want to use the other button. All right. I've just sat my fabric down on top of there. I have it nice and pressed, guys, just in case you're wondering. Usually I will take mine, but since it's good and pressed and stiff, it should be fine. I'm a little bit too far over because I didn't mark, but you're going to get the concept. Can you put us on your, um, can you put us on your other screen, Cindy, so we can see it embroidering? I, oh, sorry. Thanks. That now, normally I would take this to my ironing board and I would press my seam mm -hmm. down, but we're going to cheat today. And we're just going to tape it into place. So I'm going to pr finger press it down and tape it into place. Maybe. Can't do that in the air, and I don't have my table on. <laughs> it's like magic. Woo! So if you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments in the YouTube and Facebook because I'll be sure to uh, have Cindy answer those at the end. So, and I saw some of you saying you were writing so fast to take notes. Don't worry, you can go back and watch this over, and uh, it should be available right up, right after we're live. So, all right, she's back. Yes, we're gonna pop it right back in there. It's taped down. So now we're just going to press lock and go. <laughs> I agree. Tape can be your best embroidery friend. Yes, it can. I love paper tape. Medical paper tape is a girl's best friend. I will say I did kind of fussy cut my fabric because I wanted certain parts of the fabric in there. 
Now, I'm going to tear my tape off, at least the part that's showing. And this one I cut to five by five by eight. This is my backing fabric. We're going to place it face down over the project and then let it finish up. Now, while that's stitching, I will go back over to the cutting table and walk you through the rest of this. Oh, that is so cute. So you're going to trim it up all the way around, basically cut your corners off and then push it through to the front. Now, Something I've learned to do is trim this, trim your batting all the way up to the edge as far as you can. And then I usually press this back and this back. You leave a little bit extra on those two pieces. Notice that way they'll tuck in real well. And if you want to cheat, you can grab a little washable glue, rub it across it, push it down. That just kind of gives it a little bit of secureness while you're pushing things through. And my, my I, stitch monster didn't talk to me that time. Poke it through. That's always, I always call that the nail buster. <laughs> yeah. Depending on how big the hole is, it's, I always break a nail doing that. And the, I'm just going to take my scissors and poke it because I've lost my little poking tool. Oh, that's a good idea. I don't know what I did with it. I could use my weeding tool, but I'm afraid I'll poke through the actual whole thing. I use, you know, uh, from making jewelry, those little needle nose pliers. That's what I end up using quite often. Because you can pull and tug and it hasn't, so far I haven't, <laughs> knocking on wood, so far I've never popped a hole in anything. Uh, well, I'll, I will have to say I have poked holes in mine. <laughs> Cindy, these would make such great gifts or if you're having a cookout over the 4th or yeah. anything like that. Um, something to put drinks on, something just to put at the table. Uh, what a cute idea. So there you go. And I would, I would basically take my glue stick and glue right across there and then take it to my machine and just stitch it across or hand stitch that together. Yeah, that's really cute. Very easy project. It is. It's a very easy project and you can have fun with it. Put whatever fabrics that you want. You can find some really cute ones. Very cute. Everybody's saying that is such a cute project and you're back. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, that's really cute. All right. So do you have any questions for Cindy? There was like no questions. Everyone was like, this is so easy. And you explained so well, Cindy. It's, it's very easy to follow along. Definitely cute mug rug. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's, they're fun to make. Um, you know, everybody's doing a mug rug these days. I was going to do something else, but uh, we'd already advertised this. <laughs> <laughs> I like this though. And you know what? It's perfect timing for this because we got yep. fours coming up and usually we do this the week of the fourth and then everybody's like, I don't have time for that. And now you've got <laughs> a few weeks in advance. A few weeks yeah, you have some time to prepare um, and we're not on again until after the fourth. So you and That's I together. Right. So. That's right. All right. Do you guys have any questions? I don't see just how to replay, which we told you that. So Someone yeah. said, this project in um, uh, you did a few weeks ago with your private group. I didn't know. I actually did software for um, heat transfer vinyl. Ooh, that was that we did shadow text. That's cool. So we did that. Um, yeah, on my on a Tuesday. So speaking of Tuesday, Tuesday are you are you live today? Is your software shut in show a go today? I believe it is. Software shut in is a go today. Yes. So if That's they at want to join me this afternoon. M Eastern Standard Time for those of you that don't know. And you can go back to Cindy's page or Brother So's. They're all through the events. But if you go back to Cindy's page, click on her videos, you can binge watch those. Because I know a lot of people, Cindy, I've been getting messages that 
summer's arrived, they're doing some projects, and a lot of them are starting to dabble in the software because they started embroidering and that's like the next step. And I always send them to your page because it's so easy to follow along. They get a little of every software that we have, um, whether it be BES4, Initial Stitch, Simply Applique, Canvas Workspace, um, P Design. There's a little bit of everything and I try to cover more than one program in a week. So yeah. doing something. Have no idea what we're going to do today. So that's my next task is to figure out what we're doing today. <laughs> oh, you've got a couple of hours to figure that out. <laughs> if anybody has any excitement, anything that they want to suggest, I'm up for suggestions today. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Tell Cindy what you'd like her to teach this afternoon. Well, this was a great project. And don't forget, I have uh, the brother website down below. I have Cindy's website. She'll share that uh, design at some point. Don't expect it right away, though. She's really busy right now. <laughs> the, she said, uh, no problem. She has is not in any hurry. Um, and also, when you do these mug rugs, be sure to tag brother, hashtag brothersows.com yes, to, to see this. And sometimes and tell they, us what machine you did it on. I mean, because there are so many that can do it. And that the nice thing, that was in a five by seven hoop. So it doesn't take that long. It's not a huge stitch out. You could actually switch it up and do different outlines, different decorative fills. What I, I mean, you could do decorative, decorative outlines because I didn't actually show you those in there. There's candle wicking, there's like a chain stitch. There's quite a few different outlines on the machine itself that you could play with and have fun with, go to town. And instead of doing a fill stitch, you might do different decorative outlines. One thing, if you want your outlines to be different colors, actually they, they would be anyway, because the USA and the shadow are two different colors. So you could have two different stitches and just don't do a fill. That would be that would a make lot it of fast. Kelly has your project for the day. <laughs> Father's <laughs> design, Father's Day design workspace with the tools in the pocket, please. Um, I For software? <laughs> Kelly, I'm not more. going to Miss Cannon Cut today. I, that's a whole nother setup that we have. And I've, oh, I've that's funny. There was two more Scan and Cut requests too. I Next can. Um, Judy, we talked about the, doing it on an older one in the er, in the beginning. And I don't remember if the Quattro could bring in a JPEG or not, or if you would have to trace uh, that since it had a tablet, you would have to trace over it. The dream would work the exact same way as what I did. Yeah. But the Quattro was a, a different animal because it had a tablet that came with it. And that's how you had to trace your artwork to get it in there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. So, um, what else? So that was that one. So Judy, yeah. depends what machine you have, but dream machine on up, you should be fine. Looks like we've got all the questions. Well, you explained it so well, Cindy, and that was really, really cute. So I'm looking forward to your show this afternoon. And for those of you that want to know the whole schedule for the week, Cindy is on this afternoon, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, tomorrow, Wednesday, 1.30. Oh, boy. I've already finished most of it. But, Cindy, I've been working on another Chloe Trench, but not this one. I've been doing one out of a knit that's going to be oh, wow. summer. summer. Sweet. And I know. So I've been dabbling a little bit with the cover stitch machine, trying to decide if I'm going to do top stitching or what. It's kind of fun. So that's tomorrow at 1.30. And then Emily, unless she's on spring break or summer break, she will be on at 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Thursday, noon again. And I believe there was a change in schedule. Yes, there was. Kathy Gandy's going to be on at noon. Now, Cindy, I'll also see you this week on Soy Machines Plus. So yeah, it's something tomorrow. to set. It's a very busy week this week. It is. Brother is busy. And yes. by the way, you should visit your brother dealer because rumor has it, there are some really good deals going on right now. And mm -hmm. if it, unless it's expired, I didn't check the date. There was a 0% financing. So call your brother dealer and check that. If it's yep. expired, sorry. But I, I know I just saw a blurb about that last week. So <laughs> I saw something. I can't remember. don't remember what. I, I Actually, I think I saw something earlier this week. Well, then it should be good. Tara has um, one for you. What about a garden, garden flag, flag design? design? That's a possibility. That's Speaking possibility. of garden, 
So I got a, I have a funny one for you. Speaking of Garden City, I just put out a bunch of bird feeders that I purchased because I love seeing all the birds. And I can hear somebody mowing the lawn, and I forgot to tell them that I'd stuck a few right in the middle of the yard. So if we all of a sudden we hear something like, oh, <laughs> they ran right into them. <laughs> I just wanted them in a location I could see them from the window. So I have a feeling I'm not going to make somebody's day out there. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. It might be a bad day. Oh, everybody's saying thank you, thank you. Oh, here's one from Lois. I see so many of these mug, mug rugs. Do you spray some kind of sealant to keep stains at bay? Oh, <laughs> I leave coffee stains on mine all the time, Lois. I just throw them in the wash. I don't drink coffee, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I guess you could put, um, what is that stuff? I, I don't know what the name of it is, but you could put a protectant, a, you know, over the top of it. I can't remember what it is. Um, like a stain stain pre preventer that you get for your furniture and stuff. Yeah. Another thing you could use is a thin piece, a uh, thin piece of clear vinyl. If it's really going to get wet, like if it's going to yeah. be outside instead of soaking up all that sweat from your glass, if you're in 90 degree weather, uh, it would just kind of beat off. That's another idea for you too. Yeah. Just put that underneath your stitching. Yeah. Because the, if you use polyester thread, it's not going to stain the thread. Right. Yes, Sharon, the birdies and the squirrels are going to be very happy. <laughs> Lawnmower person, not so happy. <laughs> yeah, Sharon, right. we couldn't say the name of it. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's a protectant. <laughs> yeah, it's a protectant. All right, everyone, you have a wonderful day. Cindy, that was a great project. I look forward to seeing you again later today and later this week. So, everyone, Thank you for watching us. Leave your comments. We'll still go back and check those later. Brothers, always checking in and you can always message us. Have a wonderful day. Yes, thanks for joining us. We will talk to you soon, I think. <laughs> Bye, Cindy. Bye.